Uh, today we're going to be checking out this budget 4K gaming monitor from Asus, the VP28U. Is it any good? Let's get on with the unboxing and let's find out. Hi there, it's Clive here again today and today we're going to be looking at this, the Asus VP28U LCD monitor. It's a 28 inch 28, 28 inch LED backlit monitor and it's a 4K, specifically a 4K gaming monitor. What makes it a gaming monitor? Well, there's a number of features in here which is different from your standard monitor. Probably the most important thing for gaming is that uh, it has a one millisecond response rate, uh, a one millisecond response rate. I say it's a 4K, but it's a budget 4K monitor. This cost me about 229 pounds which for a 28 inch 4k gaming monitor is pretty good value but the question is is it any good um, about 18 months ago um, if people who are familiar with my channel would know I did a review of this which is the Asus VP 278 so it's a 27 inch screen sometimes things they say 27 inch sometimes they say 28 inch basically what they mean is it's a 28 inch panel from here to here but some of the panel is actually hidden so effectively what you see is 27 inch so 27 inch 28 inch call it what you will um, but anyway this is a gaming monitor so this was an Asus gaming monitor uh, 28 inch as I said but it was a 1080p monitor it served me really well been absolutely uh, brilliant I've had it for 18 months I'm not getting rid of it it's just gonna be I needed a second monitor I'll move that to one side over there and my new 4K monitor uh, will take pride of place in the middle. So anyway, so this is it, the Asus, Asus VP28U. This Asus monitor here has a sort of a square base where the other ones had a round base. And then uh, on the, the monitor stand, the monitor can be raised up and down. Whereas on the old monitor style, so you can get a 4K monitor based on the old Asus model, but the monitor doesn't go up and down. So that's the key, uh, the key difference on, on that if you're looking at the 4K. And the price is about the same. Sometimes even the updated version, this version is slightly cheaper than the older 4K version that Asus did. Um, so that's the thing to, to bear in mind. Let's look at the features here. Let's say Ultra HD uh, in 4K, one millisecond response time. So it says here trace free. Game Plus, play like a pro. So as with the other Asus monitor, there's a couple of features which are aimed at, at gamers. There's one with a, a little crosshair that you can have permanently on your screen. I think that's cheating a bit really. And one with a countdown timer. I think that's kind of the main thing. Uh, it's wall mountable, four way ergonomic stand. So that's what I was saying about the stand will go up and down, tilt it, and you can swivel the monitor so that it's in portrait mode rather than your standard horizontal mode. If, that, if that's what you need in life. Um, eye care, so it takes out the blue light and uh, manages the flicker and stuff to protect the eye. And an AMD uh, Radeon FreeSync. So those are the main features. Let's get on with the unboxing. So it comes here with, um, I did buy a brand new display cable. So it has two HDMI, we'll come to it later, but it has two HDMI sockets and one DisplayPort uh, socket, uh, both of which, of course, will give you uh, 4K. I did buy an extra 4K uh, lead from uh, Amazon here, but it comes with one uh, built in, which is good to know because I might need a spare one anyway. So pretty standard DisplayPort. This is a DisplayPort uh, connection there. Manual, plug. Now, this is a UK model, but it's it comes with the European um, plug socket there. You can see there, but what I found, because I've seen people complain when they get an Asus and they go, oh, it didn't come with a British plug. Usually at the bottom of the box is the connector you need so you can turn it into a UK plug. Here's the stand. So there's the, the main monitor. At the back here, you can't quite see, but the tilt device is is already connected so the main part that you connect to the stand there's an arm on the back of the monitor that's already attached and then that will go 
into this base, as we'll see later. Um, before I do that, let's just look at the bottom of the box. Again, quick, quick setup details there. And then, as I said, usually at the bottom of the box, here, what do we find? The UK club. Should be at the bottom of the box. Always check the bottom of your box. They just throw it in at the bottom for you. Then you'll see at the back here, I can't quite see, can you see it's got this arm extension here connected to the monitor already. And you can see it's got movement in it and stuff like that. That's what's gonna connect into the base. But there we go. Just to say, down here, just to reiterate the features, Asus VP28 UG, UQGL gaming monitor. This is a TN monitor, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Ultra 4K, one millisecond, plus game, display port connection, two times HDMI, as I said, eye care, the swivel ergonomic stand, so you can have it like that, or like that, if, that, if that's what you need it to do, so you, the stand will swivel like that. Wall mountable and a Radeon, Radeon FreeSync as well. So there you go. Without further ado, I'll just get it set up and then you can see what that looks like. Okay, so here is the stand which that base, that arm is gonna go on. There, and there's sort of two prongs there. And then uh, here is uh, a self-winding, well, a, a screw, you could sort of screw it in, but it's got that uh, little extra bit there that you can screw in yourself. So that's the idea there. Uh, as well, which will tighten this, the stand on place. So presumably I'll get that done now. There we go. And then, oh no, it's the wrong way around. And then it has a slightly little kind of lock on. So the piece at the bottom here, I don't know you can see, is like a dial. Actually you've got little dial marks and with a little triangle mark here, so you could sort of monitor it, so you, like a safe, like a little marker on it here, and it's got little dial figures. I mean, I think that's just kind of aesthetics, as I don't know what you're gonna, you could be sort of super precise, I guess, to get it bang on, um, presumably, but that's kind of useful. There's little indicators, uh, like a dial on the swivel stand at the bottom there. So you can turn it, as I say, nice and easy, just turn it left and right. It goes all quite far, it's on a quite a dial. I don't want to overdo it. Let's just see, see how we're gonna go here. Yeah, uh, it, it, it goes all the way around there. So I'd say, what's that, 90? Goes swivels all the way 90 degrees that way. From there, and all the way, that's as far as it'll go that way. But it's very easy. I mean, this stand feels very robust and solid. It's got sort of, yeah. Yeah, rubber feet on there. So it's pretty solid. It's not sliding about at all. And then, yeah, the ease with which you just turn the monitor like that, line it up. I guess it's at the middle. Yeah, it's a little mark there. And then um, the same here. This will go all the way up there and that's as far as it goes there. And then the arm itself should move as well. I don't know how that, we'll find out. Let's... Oh, there we are. Goes down there. Almost one touch, it's almost one touch. That's nice, it's slightly weighted. I mean, it's, you know, not super smooth, but it. So again, really easy to change the position. It's not, you don't have to kind of fiddle about, undo screws, tighten up screws, or, or kind of tighteners or anything like that. It's all by hand, and it feels weighty enough that it feel, it'll stay in place. Um, you can just tilt the screen how you want it, and then raise and lower. When we do a comparison of what they look like on screen together, the screen looks like together, um, I can kind of raise this to eye height, which is where it's meant to really be, rather than looking down, which is not good for your posture. So, especially if you're spending a lot of time working and gaming, which is what I do at this place. So there we go, that's the general unboxing. Well, uh, I'll get it all rigged up and plugged in, and then we can have a look at the screen and things like that in more detail. Okay, so I've got the two screens set up here. As you can see, this is the old monitor, this is the new monitor. 
This is using the display port connecting it for 4K HD and I'm running this on Stadia through the Chrome browser in 4K which of course you can do if you've got Stadia so that's Doom Eternal in 4K on the Chrome browser and then this is the, the same thing so I've just basically I've duplicated the screens so they're showing the same uh, signal but just on two different screens and straight away I can see this the crispness basically it's it's going to be hard to tell obviously over on the just using the camera here that, that you can see but there's a certain crispness to the writing here in the finish and um, the blacks here seem slightly more blacker although this is a TN display which means that you know the further away you are the less sort of effective it is or if you're at an angle it's not very good but if you're using it at a desk like I am or you're sitting you know about a meter away and looking straight at it then TN displays are absolutely perfect because you don't have any of these issues of being further away from it and stuff like that but certainly the writing on here is much more crisp and defined than it is on the 1080p monitor. One thing to say about this, well, the kettle lead that came with this is slightly shorter, well, it's shorter than the kettle lead that came with this. So what I've done is I've swapped the kettle leads around because the plug I need is slightly further away. So this is using the kettle lead from this one and this is using the kettle lead from that one. So that's just interesting. So they're the same kettle lead except this model it was slightly longer which is very strange um, the main thing i noticed about here is uh, some of the the brightness is, is slightly dull but as i say if you're sitting i think that's because i'm looking at it from above at a slight angle but if i'm sitting right in front of it here yeah when you're sitting right in front of the screen where i'll be sitting in reality which is about sort of here you get a real sort of sense I'm playing an angle so it won't be very good but just to give you an idea I mean again visually uh, this definitely slightly more crisp let's move the mouse out of the way we don't need that for what I'm doing here I want to really sort of stop and have a look but obviously um, Doom Eternal is not something oop and bear in mind playing on the um, Quick run away. Ooh, get out of there. I need, I need help. Oh, let's get rid of this. Let's, yeah. Where's he gone? Oh, I've gone up. I think, where's he gone? I went up on a, a steam thing. Oh, there he is. Oh my God. Run away from him. I'm playing this standing up, so I'm not being very good at that. I apologize. Oop, I keep missing. That's what... Oh, he's down. Yeah, it, you definitely can see, you can definitely see a, di uh, a difference. Um, between this uh, and that, it's just it's just crisper uh, and sort of obviously slightly more detailed. Okay, so I found some 4K footage on YouTube, and this is where you can really see the difference. That's why they all have they have these beautiful sort of landscape, moving landscape shots in TV shops when they're sort of selling you the TVs. That you really notice the depth, the, the detail in the depth uh, is much more. Uh, clear when you're showing a 4k uh, video so that's the main thing so this you're not going to see it here because when I'm shooting this in 1080p at the moment itself but I can see a, a very distinct uh, difference in the particularly the distance uh, in the image of the quality there so there, there definitely is a noticeable difference between just seeing it in the displaying it in the 4K and displaying it in the 1080p. The little joystick at the back of the monitor here, okay? And if I press it there, you'll see their little display comes up and then you either sort of press it for a full menu or just want to exit, just push it to the left, call it there, 
or power off. Just push it to the right. Input select, so if I want to change the input selection, I can just go through here and choose whatever inputs I want to use. And then just push to the left to, um, screen left that is, to, to get rid of it. Press it again. Brightness, bring the brightness down. I, I like to have brightness up, but you can bring it up. Um, bring it down. Yeah, you can see the people on the deep there. And I find this a bit more uh, intuitive than the, the ones here, which consisted of various little touch buttons along here. And then you had to sort of set on the bottom and then you sort of had to go through all the different lists. Where I think with this joystick, as long as you can find it at the back, it's much more straightforward. If I just press the menu there, you, you'll see here, I don't know if you can see, it says uh, 380 by 2160. So there's your 4K, 60 frames per second. Then you've got the blue light filter, so that takes out the, the blue light, depending on how you want it, like you'll see here. There, you see go right down there, it takes out the blue light, so it's good for eye strain and stuff, but we'll have it up there. Uh, then the brightness and contrast, color temperature. Then you've got um, various other things here, adaptive free sync on, vivid pixel, not sure what that is. Trace free. 60 frames, I think that is. Then you say another access to the display ports. And then here, your volume. I don't have any volume. Let's see if we can find uh, any volume that comes through on this. There is a headphone socket in the back that you can use. Game Plus, which gives you the game features. As I say, it tends to be, um, if I do that, you have like a crosshair, a timer, uh, frames per second counter, display alignment and stuff like that. And then you can set some settings uh, that you might prefer in different uh, situations and stuff. But apart from that, it's uh, fairly straightforward. And as I say, the quality is absolutely fine. If you're sitting within, say, about a meter, meter and a half, it's absolutely f and straight in front of it, it's it's perfectly fine. That's the nature of a TN uh, panel. Uh, you need to be in front of it. But if you're using it as a gaming monitor or computer monitor, that's where you're going to be sitting. You're not the other side of the room or anything like that. So on that basis, uh, it's absolutely ideal. And there we go. You can have it. So I'm using the two screens for different things. Help me in my work where I can have a, a game on here and then my OBS and stream work and stuff on there. And you can split the work across the screens and it's all kind of uh, cool with that regard. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. So they're the VP828U 4K gaming monitor. I say it's a budget gaming monitor, but the picture is absolutely fine. Gives you 4K crisp details, especially if you're only kind of sitting a meter, meter and a half away, which you tend to be at the desk. So in those circumstances, it's absolutely fine. It's a 4K, a 75 Hertz. So perfect for 4K, 60 frames per second gaming and things like that. If you need any more, then perhaps you'd need to invest in a slightly more powerful gaming monitor that gave you kind of more uh, high refresh rate. But for general needs for an Xbox One X or a PlayStation 4 Pro or Stadia and the Chrome browser or basically 4K, uh, just watching 4K stuff, then it's absolutely fine. It works really well. And for the price, which is £229, so you're talking anywhere between $200 and $250 in the US, I guess, uh, it's pretty good for a 4K monitor, in my opinion. I'd say it's only a TN panel, uh, not perfect. Again, I haven't tested the sound out on it, but it does have a headphone socket, but I don't use it for the sound. So there you go. I hope you found that useful. I'll try and leave as much specs as I can splattered across the video here and all that kind of thing and down in the description. Remember, if you've liked this video, then please hit like, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I put up reviews. Uh, it really helps me and it will really help you when I have more tech reviews to come very, very soon. Thank you for your time. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you around very soon. Goodbye.